Hello there friends, it's Ashley here from the Loopy Lamb and the LoopyLamb.com and today I've got a step-by-step -step tutorial for you on how to make my pattern for Enid's Snood. Now Enid's Snood is inspired by the crochet snood that is worn by the character Enid in the new Netflix show Wednesday. What is it exactly? It's a snood, silly. I made it in your signature colors. And you want to know what the best part is? I have one too! And in case you have not seen it, Enid is Wednesday Adam's roommate, and there is an episode called Quid Pro Wo, in which Enid crochets two crochet snoods, and she makes one for herself in shades of pink, and she makes one for her, friends, for her friend Wednesday in black. So this cowl pattern, or snoods pattern, I should say, is uh, versatile and can be adapted to either be for Enid's snood or for Wednesdays. Yeah, it's just going to be a whole lot of fun to make. This is accessible for beginners and it works up really, really quickly. So to follow along with today's tutorial, you're going to need three shades of pink yarn. I'm using a worsted weight yarn called Burnett Premium and we're going to be holding two strands of worsted weight yarn together to create a bulky weight yarn. I didn't want to run out and get any heavier weight yarn and this is these colors were in my stash and they fit what I was looking for so this is what we're going to be working with. So it's really versatile in that if you don't want, want to use the worsted weight yarn but you want to substitute a uh, super bulky or bulky weight yarn you can go ahead and do that. But um, for me here today, we're going to be using two strands of worsted weight yarn. Now this is Burnett Premium, so you're going to need three balls of that if you're wanting to use the exact yarn that I'm using. And each one of these balls has 360 yards or 329 meters. We're not going to use the whole balls, um, so you can probably, but you'll get at least just one snood from one uh, the three balls there. So for the colors that I have here, we have candy pink hot pink and pink macaroon up here in the top. And um, when we're holding our yarn double, you can either pull from each end of the skein or you can do what I've done and you can cake up some yarn into little mini cakes. And I'm going to be pulling from both the skein and the matching cake. So if you're going to cake them up, make sure that you cake probably at least uh, a third to a half of the amount of yarn in the skein, so that way you don't have to keep stopping and making more. You should have more than enough in if you're doing uh, a third to a half of a skein into a cape. Anyways, uh, you're also gonna need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and you're also going to need a nine millimeter or N crochet hook. Gauge is not vital to this pattern. The measurements, you're gonna wanna get close to 60 inches, so that way you can wrap it around your head appropriately. Uh, so you, if you're going to vary this pattern in any way, if you want to adjust the length, uh, I would recommend going creating a chain longer than 60 inches. I wouldn't go much shorter unless you're looking for a cowl length. You're also going to need a clover tassel maker set to the smallest setting. This is technically the large size tassel maker. However, you can use a cell phone or a piece of cardboard if that's what you've got. So let me clear my space here and we're going to get started making our Enid snood. To start the Enid snood, we're going to be holding two strands of our worsted weight yarn together. And this is the color candy pink. So we're going to start by creating a slip knot. So we're going to hold both strands together and we're going to create our slip knot with both strands. So we're going to wrap our yarn around our finger and create an X on our finger like so. Flip our hand over and then we're going to pin the working yarn down with our ring finger. Grab your hook and we're going to put it under the first strand, put it up over the second, and then drag the second set of uh, strands under the first, and then pull everything off of your fingers and transfer it onto the hook. Then pulling both ends of the yarn, you're going to tighten up your knot and then slide it up to your hook and you're ready to go. To start our snood, you're going to create a chain of 104. So to do our chain, we're going to yarn over and pull through the loop on our hook, and that's one. Yarn over and pull through the loop, and there's two. Yarn over, pull through, there's three. And you're gonna continue until you have 104 chains. So I'm gonna create my chain here, and I'll meet you back here when you've got 104 chains. 
All right, so we're done our chain. You'll notice mine is a little shorter because my daughter is, uh, she's six and she really wants a snood, but she can't figure it out. So we're going to make a smaller version for her today. Now, um, which reminded me, I wanted to let you know that if you wanted to adjust the length of your snood, this is the time to do it. You can either chain less or more. It doesn't matter how many you chain. Uh, there's no stitch multiple for this. Just chain until your desired length. But if you want it to be a snood and you want it to look um, the same as in my sample photo and you want it to easily wrap twice to get that uh, hood look that you get with the snood, then you have to chain to at least 60 inches for an adult. Okay, so now that we have our desired chain length, we're going to take care not to twist our chain and we're going to come back to the first chain and we're going to do a slip stitch into the first chain. So I've got my, my first chain here and I'm going to insert my hook into that chain. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through the yarn or the loop on my hook and then I'm going to pull it through the second loop on my hook as well to create that slip knot. And now we're ready to start with round one. For round one, we're going to start by creating a chain three. So we're going to yarn over and pull through three times. So that's one, two, and three. Now in this pattern, the chain three will always count as your first stitch. And in a pattern where the chain, it says that the chain three counts as your first stitch, that means that we're always going to skip our first stitch and start working in the second, right? So it doesn't matter if it's your chains or your stitches, you're always going to skip that first and start in your second. So now that we've, we're skipping our first stitch, we're going to place a double crochet into the next chain. To do a double crochet, we're gonna yarn over hook and we're gonna insert our hook into the next chain. And we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. We should have three loops on our hook now. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through the last two loops. And that's our first double crochet stitch. And now we're going to work one double crochet into each chain around. So we're going to yarn over, insert into the next chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through two yarn over and pull through two. And that's our next double crochet. So we're just going to double crochet into each chain around until you have, if you've done your 104 chains, you should have 104 stitches. So no matter how many chains that you've created, you should have the same number of stitches at the end of your round. So I'll show you that double crochet one more time. We're gonna yarn over hook, insert our hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through the first two loops. Yarn over and pull through the next two. And that's your double crochet completed. So I'm going to finish doing my double crochets into each chain around. When you get to the last stitch of your round, come back and meet me here and I'll show you what we're going to be needing to do to move on to our next row. So I just did my last stitch and I'm ready to move on to round two. But before I do that, I need to join my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch. And for round two, we're going to be changing colors. So for our first stitch of the round, it was the chain three. So we're going to insert our hook into the top of the chain three. So in case you can't see that, there's our one, two, three. There's the top of our chain three. And we're just going to insert our hook into that stitch. Now I'm going to drop this color and I'm going to pick up two strands of my new color and this color I'm using here is hot pink and I'm just going to lay it over my crochet hook and then I'm going to pull that through the stitch and through the loop on my hook. Right, then I'm going to pull the old color to tighten that up, drop it and I'm ready to move on with my new color. For round two we're going to chain up three so yarn over pull through the loop three times and then we're going to do one double crochet into each stitch around. But remember the, that first stitch is our uh, chain three. So we're going to skip the first stitch and double crochet into the second. And we're not turning. We're always having the uh, right side of the work facing us. So we've got our first double crochet and then we're just going to double crochet into each stitch 
around. All right, so this is what we've got so far. We've got the two different colors and we're just working our way around in every stitch in double crochet. So if you'd like to pause your video and work your double crochets, you, there, you're not gonna have any change in stitch count. If you did the 104 at the beginning, you should still have 104 stitches at the end. Our slip stitch joins do not count as uh, stitches in our stitch count. So um, if you'd like to do, do your double crochets around and meet me back here when you are about to do your last stitch, I'll meet you back here and I'll show you how we're going to move on to the next row. So I just finished my last stitch of the round and I'm ready to move on to round three and I need to change colors moving into round three. So I have my last stitch completed and I'm going to join my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook into the top of the chain three, drop my old color, bring in the new color held double stranded and I'm going to place it on my hook. Then I'm going to pull the new color through the chain three and through the loop on my hook. And I'm going to pull the old color tight to tighten up that slip stitch. Then I'm going to chain up three to start my new round. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through three times. One, two, and three. And as in our previous rounds, this chain three counts as our first stitch. So we will start working into our second stitch. And for rounds three and four, they're done the exact same way. They're going to be working one double crochet into each stitch around. Again, skipping that first stitch, starting into the second, work one double crochet into each stitch around. And you're going to join with a slip stitch at the end of each round, but you're going to continue on in these, this color when you're going into round four. So you're going to do rounds three and four in this uh, new color, which is the pink macaroon. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rounds three and four in pink macaroon, double crochet into each stitch around, I will meet you back here at the end of round four and I'll show you how we'll change colors and move into round five. So I just finished my last stitch of round four and I'm ready to move on to round five. For round five, we're going to be changing our colors again. So we're going to insert our hook into the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round. And we're going to drop our old color, bring in our new color, and we're going to pull that through the chain three and through the loop on our hook to join the two ends. And we're gonna tighten up the old color, pick up the new color, and we're ready to start with round five. We're going to start with a chain three, so yarn over and pull through three times. And then we're going to place one double crochet into each stitch around, but again, we skip our first stitch and we start into the second stitch. So the instructions for round five and six are the same. We're just going to work one double crochet into each stitch around using this hot pink color. So if you'd like to pause your video into two rounds of double crochet, joining with a slip stitch at the end of your round, I'll meet you back here at the end of round six, where we will change colors before moving into round seven. So I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I just finished my last stitch of row six and I'm ready to move on to row seven, but we're going to be changing colors again. So we're going to insert our hook into the top of the chain three, drop our old color, bring in the new color, which is going to be this pink macaroon. I keep getting the colors confused. <laughs> all these pinks and we're just pulling the the new yarn through the chain three and through the loop on our hook and so we're going to pull the old color if I can find it here we go we're going to pull that tight and then we're moving on with our new color the pink macaroon and so we're going to yarn over and chain up three 
Now for rows seven, eight, and nine, they're all done the same way. We're working one double crochet into each stitch around. Again, we're skipping that chain three, starting in the second stitch. And then at the end of the round, we're joining with a slip stitch. So if you'd like to pause your video and do three rows or three rounds, seven, eight, and nine in the uh, light pink or pink macaroon colorway, then I'll meet you back here at the end of row nine, where we'll be changing colors again, and we'll be moving on to round 10. So I just finished my last stitch of row nine and you'll notice that I've had a change of color here. That was not intentional. I've unfortunately run out of yarn in the middle of my project and I'm not able to run out and get any more at this time. So I just kind of grabbed some random pink yarn from my stash to finish it off. And luckily for my, for me, my daughter's motto is if it's pink, it's great. So she's really not going to care about this slight change in color. So we're ready to move on for to round 10 and we're going to be changing colors again. So we're moving into our, the first color that we used, which is called the candy pink. So we're going to insert our hook into the top of the chain three, drop our old yarn color, bring in the next color again, which is the candy pink. And we're going to pull that through the chain three and through the loop on our hook. Then we're going to pull the old yarn tight, pick up the new yarn, and we're ready to proceed. For rows 10 and 11, they are done the same way. We're going to start with a chain up of three. So yarn over and pull through three times. Then we're going to skip our first stitch and we're going to double crochet into each stitch around. At the end of the row, we're going to join our last stitch to our first stitch with a slip stitch. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rounds at 10 and 11 in double crochet, I'll meet you back here at the end of round 11, where we'll be changing colors again and moving into round 12. So I just finished my last stitch of uh, round 11 and I'm ready to move on to round 12, but we're going to change colors first and we're going to be changing colors to the uh, pink macaroon, which is uh, my new kind of random pink color that we have selected from my stash. So um, we're just going to join our last stitch with a slip stitch as we've been doing with every round here, going into the top of the chain three, dropping the old color, bringing in the new color and pulling that through the chain three and through the loop on your hook. Pull the old yarn tight and you're ready to move on with the new color. For rounds 12 and 13, we're doing the same thing we've been doing this whole project. We're going to chain up three, skip the first stitch and double crochet into each stitch around. At the end of the round, we're going to join our round with a slip stitch. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rounds 12 and 13, working one double crochet into each stitch round, I'll meet you back here at the end of round 13, where we'll be changing colors again and moving on to round 14. So I just finished my last stitch of row 13 and I'm ready to move on to round 14, but we're going to be changing colors again. So I'm going to insert my uh, hook into the top of the chain three, drop my old color, and I'm going to bring in my new color, which is the hot pink. And I'm going to pull that through the chain three and through the loop on my hook to join the two parts together. I'm going to pull the old yarn tight and I'm ready to move forward with the hot pink. Now we're going to chain up three and skipping the first stitch, we're going to double crochet in the second stitch and each remaining stitch around. So we're just going to do one round here of the hot pink. So if you'd like to pause your video and double crochet around and meet me back here when you're ready to do round 15, I will finish up my round here and I'll meet you back here at the end of the round. I just finished the last stitch of round 14. I'm moving on to round 15 where I'm going to slip stitch and change colors as we have done for the remainder of the piece. So I'm going to insert my hook into the top of the chain three, drop my old color, and I'm going to bring in the new color, which is the candy pink. 
and then I'm going to pull that loop through the top of the chain three and through the loop on my hook. Pull the old yarn tight and then pick up the candy pink. If I can here, here we go. And then I'm going to chain up three and I'm ready to move on. So we're just going to place one double crochet into each stitch around. Again, remember you skip that first stitch, which is your chain three, start in the second stitch and double crochet and double crochet into each stitch around. At the end of this round, you can join your last stitch to your first stitch with a slip stitch, and then you can finish off and cut your yarn. If you're wanting to add the tassels to your snood, like, in the uh, show, I will uh, meet you back here at the end of this round to show you how to make the tassels that um, you can attach to your Enid's snood. All right, so we are done our snood, but we need to add the tassels. In the show, Enid's snood and the Wednesday's snood both have tassels on them. So um, in my sample here, I did two different colors of yarn in each uh, tassel because that's what it looked like Enid's snood had on in the show. And Wednesday's also did have two colors. They did black and white. And now uh, I did, I do think I forgot to mention that if you want to turn uh, Enid's snood into Wednesday's snood, all you have to do is uh, follow the pattern we just did, but do it with black yarn. And then the tassels that we're going to make now, you would make them with holding one strand of black and one strand of white together. For me right now, um, I'm using one strand of the candy pink and one strand of the hot pink together. But if you prefer to use two of the same color together, you can go ahead and do that. So I've got my clove, large clover tassel maker set to the small setting here. And I'm ready to start my tassel. I'm going to take my tail and I'm going to wrap it around, or both tails actually, and I'm going to wrap it around the little white knob there just to help secure it. And then I'm going to wrap around the frame. I like to do it uh, probably, I think I did 13 times. So I'm just going to wrap it 13 times. Now, if you ha don't have one of these and uh, you still want to make the tassels, you can do this around a phone. You can do this around a uh, book or um, even just a piece of cardboard, whatever you've got handy. It doesn't need to be this if, you've don't, if you don't have it and you don't want to run out and buy this. Okay, so we've got our tassel maker wrapped. I think that looks good. I'm going to bring my yarn up and around and I'm going to wrap it around this knob. All right, I'm going to pull that tight because I don't want that to come loose and I'm going to cut my yarn. Then I'm going to cut a strand of yarn, probably about eight to 10 inches long. I'm going to actually double mine up here. I want two strands at the same time. And I'm going to bring the yarn in from the bottom and pull the ends up from the bottom of the frame so they come up on either side of the yarn. So I've got the yarn pulled up from behind the frame up on either side of the wrapped yarn here, and I'm going to tie a knot in the center of the wrapped yarn, which is going to become our tassel. So I'm just going to tie a knot here. This is a little bit easier if you have a second set of hands to hold that tight, but I'm going to do my best here on my own. Ideally not tying my hand in place would be great. And then I'm gonna flip it over, pull the tails to the back of the tassel, and I'm going to repeat. I'm gonna tie that, and I wanna tie it as tight as I can. So now I'm going to grab my scissors, and along the top of the tassel maker here, there's some ridges, and you're just going to take your scissors and cut along the ridge. Hold on to the center of your tassel to maintain tension as you cut. Now I'm going to flip it over. Ooh, I'm going to pull this tight and I'm going to trim the other side. Now, if you're using a cell phone or anything, you're, you're going to do this step. You're just not going to have this little ridge like I do on, have on the tassel maker here. 
So now that I have my tassel freed from the frame, I'm going to grab those tails that I had that I tied, used to tie the knot, and I'm just gonna shake it out and push all of my strands down. So now that we have our little tassel here, you can see how it's going to become a tassel, but now we need to secure it and wrap the head of the tassel. This can be done with one or two strands, but I find it a little easier with one at this stage. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take the tail end of our yarn, and I like to make it a little longer than the tassel so it's easier to find later, and I'm going to lay it on top of the tassel. Also, I, I like to smooth this down as much as I can because I like to have the top of the end, the uh, head of the tassel looking neat. So here's our tail. Then I'm going to create a loop. And I'm just going to pin it down with my thumb. All right, so you can see that little loop. And then we're going to use the working yarn to wrap the head of the tassel. So we're going to take the loop or the working yarn and wrap the head. We want this loop to remain on top here because we're going to need it to secure the yarn that we're wrapping around. So you can wrap this as many times as you'd like. It doesn't need to be perfect. I know that these tails here are getting in the way and it's a little annoying, but we're gonna need those to secure our tassel to our snoot. So we endure. <laughs> So now that I have this wrapped uh, how I'd like it to be, I'm going to cut my yarn. Now, I like to grab my hook at this point because it, it just makes it a little easier and faster for me. You can use your fingers if you'd like. But I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this loop of yarn and I'm going to pull the tail that I just cut through the loop of the yarn. Okay, then I'm going to find that yarn tail that we left hanging down here at the end and I'm going to grab the yarn tail we just pulled through the loop and I'm, we're going to pull them both tight. It would help if it stayed put. Give me one sec. All right, here we go. I'm going to hold this one, pull the bottom one. And I don't know if you can see it because pink on pink on camera is a little tricky, but what it's doing is it's pulling that tail underneath. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my tapestry needle and then I'm going to take the tail and just push it down underneath where we wrapped and pull it out through the bottom. And that is our tassel completed. And now I'm just going to take my scissors and trim the ends of my tassel until they're nice and even or however I like it. You can do that by holding them in your fist like so and just trimming off any kind of stragglers that you see. Or I've also seen it where people will use like the end of a toilet paper tube. They'll slide it down essentially like what I'm doing with my hand here and then they just trim across the bottom of the tube using the tube as kind of a guiding point across to get it all equal. So that's it. So now that I have my tassel completed, I'll bring over my snood. Now, wherever you wanna secure this is up to you. There's, you know, there's no real right or wrong way to do it. When I did mine, I secured them to the bottom. I made three. From what I could tell in the show, some scenes it looked like she had three, some it looked like you, she had six. So make three or six, however many tassels you'd like to have. I did three and uh, I just secured mine to the bottom. What I did is I um, took my tapestry needle or you can even use your hook. This would be a little faster. And I pulled one strand through. Let's do it this way. pulled one side of my tail th through and then I just secured it with a knot. That's it. Super fancy folks. Just tied a little knot. You can do this better. You can weave your, you so actually sew it in, but honestly, a knot's faster and no one's really going to notice it. So I tied a little knot and then what, then I wove my ends into my piece and moved on to making another tassel.
right? And so there you go. You can see it hanging off there. And then I'll just weave my ends in, make two more tassels, and my snood is complete. So I hope that you enjoyed this uh, tutorial for Enid Snood. If you did, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to this channel for free weekly content. Speaking of free content, if you enjoy free crochet patterns, please check out my blog, theloopylam.com, where you can also find the free written version of this pattern as well. So that's it for me this week, friends. I hope that you enjoyed it and uh, happy hooking and I will see you again next time.